Check out this used mobile home dealership. We're talking with Doug on today's video, who is an active mobile home investor that has now built this used mobile home dealership. A lot of these mobile homes are his inventory that he picked up for great deals. We're going to talk about these homes, selling them, buying them, all the secrets. Stay tuned later on today's video. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me, for joining Doug on this very special Mobile Home Investing Lessons podcast. We are going to be talking about creating your own mobile home dealership, creating your, your own mobile home sales lot. What does that mean? Why should you do it? Why you might not want to do this? The benefits? Uh, Doug, thank you so much for being here. I'm oh, you did, John. You. Appreciate the opportunity. This is cool. I'm so... <laughs> Because what a what a great group of folks that we have, you know, just willing to share and I mean all the, the the hiccups and the hurdles that you've overcome. You're willing to come on here and just talk about your mistakes, talk about what's worked. Thank you for doing that. Oh yeah, you bet. I mean, if I can help somebody else out, and you know, they don't have to go through what I went through, and you know, I mean, and I've learned a lot from watching your broadcast as well. So of course, you know, I'd be happy to, to give back. We've been working together almost, a, or right, actually almost a year. What has been your mobile home business and your real estate business? Kind of a brief background before you before you built this dealership. Can right. You um, well, you know, I've kind of always been an entrepreneur. Always had that in me. I, I owned a dry cleaning business many many years ago. Um, kind of family business. Um, I was a you know didn't ever fit in that corporate world kind of deal. And and uh, so I worked for a smaller company. Locally, we got bought out by a big company, became a corporate guy. I was a regional vice president and all that, you know, sounds fancy, big title, you know, but that's about it. You know, so um, I was definitely looking and I've always been looking, always kind of, you know, kept my eye out on stuff and um, looked at some real estate business. A couple of years ago, I was looking at wholesaling and, you know, took some classes. I actually went to some courses in, in locally down here and, and some um, REI groups and what have you. And, and, uh, you know, I kind of got into it, but boy, it was just very competitive and it was tough. Um, it was really tough for me to, to figure that out. So, um, I just kind of stumbled across looking for some things in that, in that, uh, arena and came across some YouTube videos, some of yours, um, you know, some other people. And I kind of started thinking mobile homes, you know, what is, there's no money in mobile homes and, and, uh, you know, just, one thing led to another and I kept on looking at it and kept on thinking about it. Then, um, you know, I, I really started following you and, and uh, you know, I, I got your course and, you know, uh, kind of jumped in with both feet. I, I started out with uh, my first deal was uh, I was actually supposed to partner with some guys that were in my neighborhood that I guess I kind of talked into it. And they were like, yeah, well, I went down to go close on my very first one on closing. The day, an hour before I was supposed to close it, um, my main partner backed out, <laughs> you know, on the way to the close. So I had to call my seller and say, hey. So I called a guy that I knew in the business and he referred me to somebody. So I picked up the phone, called that guy and he said, well, let's go look at it. And we wound up buying it um, like a, a day or two later. And he became my partner for a while. Um, his name is Miguel, a great guy. And, and, uh, we wound up just, we, we rehabbed that one. I sold it and we made some money. I'm like, wow, we made some money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was in a park. And, and uh, so we bought, um, I don't know, probably in the next uh, seven, eight, nine months, we probably bought, I don't know, 25 or so. And um, he did the remodeling. I did the purchasing and, you know, we stumbled across and, and, you know, I think I called you all the time, <laughs> and, you know, lots of, different ways of making mistakes. And, and, uh, you know, I kind of got into it and, uh, cash flow was good. I mean, you know, we, we had some hits and some misses. We had some home runs, we had some zeros and, you know, all that goes with it, but I just kept on going. And, and, uh, um, back in, I guess, February of this past year, I quit my job. Um, you know, I got to that point where my income was, was, uh, you know, it's kind of hard when you're looking at, you know, you don't get a paycheck, but you're getting income coming in and then you got this other places you don't really like to be and it's taken away from your passion and, and things. And, you know, my wife was like, make sure we strategically do this. And I was like, sure. And so I went into a meeting one day and I got ticked off and I quit. So <laughs> I didn't strategically do it. But, you know, she was like, I came home. I was like, well, I hung it up because I knew you were going to do that. So, <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't just a, it was planned. I, I was coming pretty soon. And so, 
I just went ahead and pulled the mandate off. And, uh, um, since then we, we, we got the dealership and, uh, sold my house and, uh, moved out to the area and put all the meat on the grill. And, uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very yeah. Texas saying. Yeah. That's excellent. Oh my goodness. That is a good timeline. Um, you're right. And then Miguel and he, I didn't realize that Miguel was such a, was doing the, the, uh, the construction, the repairs. Yeah. Yeah. His, okay. He had a team of guys that were doing it. And so he would do work on that part. And then I was doing more of the buying and selling and he spoke Spanish, which was great. And so, uh, you know, and then when I got the dealership, we didn't, uh, you know, he wasn't able to put the time in, and, you know, where's, where's, I, I talked to him yet, uh, yesterday. So there's no, we, we, we parted ways. We decided to do our own thing, but we're still good friends and still, you know, um, you know, talk about things. And he, he, if he, if he can buy one or something that I pass on or something, I certainly give it to him and vice versa. So. Was the goal from the beginning with real estate or mobile homes, always that cash flow for you? Or did you, did you have the capital to cap? Did you have the capital in the beginning to build up the cash flow or did you have to keep flipping these homes and yeah uh, i mean i've always been a pretty good saver and so i had a little bit of money but uh you know it was nothing like i i had no idea um what you know it's kind of like a, a place to make some money to begin with and you know help out with the bills and you know kind of like wow we made you know eight thousand dollars or whatever the thing is and then split that we take four each but then we started putting the money in the bank and we started you know uh not really taking any money and and then it started you know when i started looking at it differently you know how can we make this a business that's sustainable and how can i replace my income and then it started to get more serious about okay this just isn't a hobby this is something that i want to do huh. and you know I want to replace my income with this. And so it went from doing something on the weekends here and there to, Hey, this is a big deal. We can, we can do this. And so then I, you know, I took a shift of, of where it was and um, you know, can I quit my job? Um, then, you know, not only did I quit my job, we, you know, we built, we built a house. Um, I think we bought it in 2018. Um, nice home, put a pool and all these things. And I thought that's where I was going to live until, I don't know, retirement or so. And then, you know, we just sold it in June. Um, and that was a big step. My wife quit her job. She was a school teacher. Wow. And, you know, so she works at the office now. Uh, you know, she quits every other <laughs> week. And, <laughs> but, you know, that's good. I mean, I'm glad that happened. But, you know, so, I mean, it's a, it's a different lifestyle change. And, and um, I mean, there's no regrets, but, you know, we just jumped in full force. You know, I burned the boats. There's no, there's no going back. And, and, uh, I took the money we made off the house and invested in my business. And, you know, here we are. I love that. But you've been investing for some time already. You knew that this was proven. I didn't. Thank you for mentioning that, that when you started this, you didn't know if this was going to be a dud or, a, you know, moneymaker. And then you right. did your first deal and another one and 10 more. And 20. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, you kind of start thinking, wow, this and there's, you know, it's not that much competition where it is and, and it can be tricky you know it can be it can be definitely you know something that you you know i bought one before where you know i, I bought it and man it needed so much work i was just so glad to, to break even thank goodness i did but you know you got to really know your market you got to know your your uh um what you can sell them for what you should be buying it for and you know that comes with time does come with time. In some states, it's easier. There's easier to run comps on those mobile homes and in parks or on land. Are any of these on land? Are they in parks? Are they they have to be moved? Or I didn't even ask you. That. Uh, yeah, most of them are. Well, when I first started doing it, because I didn't have a, a lot, uh, they were pretty much all in parks. Um, I mean, there's so many times when I bought one, it has to be moved out of a park by the end of the month and I still buy it anyway. I have no idea where it's going to go, <laughs> you know? And then, so we're getting near the end of the month, the park manager, I mean, Miguel and I would laugh because the park managers call me on the 30th or the 31st. Or the first, and I'm not answering my phone because I know it's them. And then, you know, by the third, we get a deal and I'm sweating bullets. And then I've called the park manager. Like, oh, are you trying to call me? You know, but, <laughs> but it always worked out. And, you know, that was so, that's probably one of the one reasons that, you know, when the opportunity came and, I'm not driving everywhere to, to try to get them out of a park. I mean, it's ideal if it could stay in a park at the time and then, you know, try to work with the manager on, on lot rents and, 
you know, can we repair it and all those type of things. But uh, sometimes they're like, it has to be out by this day. And you're like, yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> you know, you, you know, but, but it, it, it winds up, you know, if I had to drop the price or, or, you know, maybe pay lot rent or something, there's always a way to do it. But uh, it's, it's nice not to have that type of, I, and most of them I move now to the lot um, unless it's in a park and most of them I find that are on land itself and they want to move. So, so you're really leaning into that. I mean, most investors don't have the benefit of, I can move this to my, com to my, uh, to my dealership, to my land, you yeah. know, move the home there as a staging area, fix the home up, and then resell it from that from that lot. Most investors don't have that benefit, so you're really leaning into that. Um, are you opposed to doing deals in parks or deals on land, or are these just the deals that you're finding? The home? No, I found one this week that I'm looking at that I made an offer on. It's in a park; it can stay there. I know okay. the manager, and um, so yeah, you know, um, I guess the the deal with that is not having to have to drive there to the park and show it and, and uh, you know, have, and I'm sure the manager would help me out there. They wanted to stay in the park because a lot rent yeah. and um, I would probably prefer it because then I don't have to spend the, the money to move it, but then I have to send my crew out there to, to, to fix it up. So um, there's pros and cons with each one, but I do like the fact that they're all centralized. I can run Facebook ads, um, promote my products and my dealership. So now I'm not just re, uh, promoting one mobile home. I'm promoting a dealership. And, you know, um, I think I have right now probably about 13 on the lot or so. So i got a variety of, of mobile homes I could show. So, um, and, you know, quite a few are sold, but, you know, and I do like the fact that, um, you know, I kind of got three different models. I got the ones that are um fixed up that we that we rehabbed them um i got one some that are as is for people that are looking for more of an economical way um they're they're not junk they're pretty nice inside but you know hey could they need a new carpet whatever and then i have the opportunity um if they come in there i can show them one that's already fixed up and let's say i don't have any available but they want to have it fixed up i at least have um, a model to show them and then they can, a lot of them want to pay for the, the rehab themselves and say, yeah, you know what? I want it like that. And I can give them the option of, of saying, okay, well, this is going to be how much the rehab is going to cost. And that's going to be paid up front. And they're like, sure, I'll do it. You know, so it doesn't have my out of pocket isn't as much because we do, I would say about 90% of them we do owner financing. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Excellent model. Yeah. So I try to get what I put into it for the down payment, which doesn't always work, but you know, um, but that's, that's the goal and, and to try to um, try to buy right and uh, bring them in and then, you know, put some money into them and then sell them for what I have down and then run a, you know, seven year note on them or seven to 10 year note or something like that. I love that. And then sell for cash. I mean, if somebody makes you an offer, you can't refuse on cash then. Oh yeah. So, I mean, cash flow reasons, there's some, I mean, sometimes I'll put some of this cash only. I got a rehab right now that a, it's a five bedroom monster. Whoa. And, a monster. Uh, yeah, I bought it right. It's about 2,300 square feet. And uh, wow. I think I may have a buyer today for it for cash kind of as is, uh, you know, it, it, it meets all the qualifications because there's, it is habitable and, and whatever would pass a habitability test. But you know, we haven't gone and put new carpet. So I'm kind of doing that one as a, as a cash deal. If not, I'll remodel it and sell it for a lot more, but you know, it's, I can do a cash deal. And that helps them. The, the biggest issue I'm finding right now is cash flow. Um, trying to be able to buy, um, manage my money and, and uh, you know, keep money in the bank and have money to buy because uh, I think that's my biggest challenge right now. Uh, but I'm managing it and I feel good about it, but it just, you know, it's, it's one of those things that kind of, Ooh, you know, when you go out and buy five or six or so and you bring them into the lot and you spend that money and then you got to turn them and, you know, you got the, you know, we put a, we put a lot of money into these and, and they do sell and, and you just got to have the right price and be patient and just know that the right uh, buyer is going to come along. For how many cash buyers, for, for every one cash buyer, you know, how many payment buyers do you think are out there? Or do you get your five, six, just a... a you're getting yeah. way more feedback from the, the payments. Yeah, the payments. And because uh, the buyers we have, um, I would say um, it's people with credit issues. Maybe they don't have the right uh, um, um, credit background or whatever, but they're 
hardworking people and they can put up a down payment. So I don't do a credit check. Um, I don't do a, uh, um, so they don't need a, uh, they usually have their ITIN number, but I don't have a, they don't have a social security card or they don't have good credit. And um, at closing, I do a pretty good, um, you know, we have a conversation. I look at their bank statement. They do have to have a bank statement, three months worth. And then I run a um, debt to, um, a, a debt to cash ratio on them to make sure that they're, they're, you know, every penny they have, they don't spend. And if they're look like they're pretty good with their money, I'll go ahead and do it. And I'll tell them, look, I'm taking a chance on you. Not to that point, but let them know, look, this is my money. I'm not rich. I'm not a bank. You know, if, if, if this does go south, I will come and repossess. Um, but it doesn't ever, it's not a negative conversation. They're usually appreciative and, uh, I mean, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any problems yet. I mean, I'm sure we will as we grow our business, but um, most people are, you know, we do a good job. I, I, I make sure we do an inspection on each one before it goes out, a plumbing, a, an electrical, we send them a good product. Um, you know, I'm upfront with them. And so it works both ways. Um, and most of our families, they don't want to, uh, you know, they want to pay their bills. They want to have a place to live. And so, you know, we try to, I just try to be open with them and honest and, and uh, um, you know, upfront and let them know that, you know, we're, we're working this both ways and it's, it's worked out well. What do you think was most important to buyers these days? Do you think the buyers are loyal to you? Like if you don't have anything in your, on the dealership, you say, Hey, I don't, I don't have anything at the moment, but we'll be getting something. Yep. You know, do you think buyers are loyal to you or they're just looking for the best deal they can find the quickest? I think they're loyal to us. Um, there's so where, where I am in, in a um, location, we're about an hour north of Houston in a, in a suburb called Conroe. There's probably five um, different mobile home uh, park, I mean, uh, dealers within eight miles of me, wow. but they're all new um, mobile homes. They do have some used, but they don't push it. So my clientele is looking for used mobile homes. They're looking to not pay above $50,000, you know, I mean, unless it's a double wide and something like that. But um, so usually when they come in, we have a conversation, you know, my wife uh, speaks Spanish, she's fluent, she's from Mexico. And so that is a great help. And, uh, you know, I'll tell them, I don't have anything now, but we'll, we'll find something or whatever. And, and um, I would say we have had a lot of people come back. We have a list of people I'll call and I'll have it sold that next day to them or, or something. So I would say a big majority is loyal to us. And um, I think they like the fact that it's a, a you know, husband, wife, mom and pop's uh, place. Um, they don't have to go through because um, financing, that's a big deal uh, for people. And to know that uh, we're doing it ourselves because they're like, you know, well, what's how what's the the how long is it going to be for the loan? I'm like, well, you tell me. You know, I can make it any, any time you want. What does it need to be around? And we'll work the numbers. So they kind of understand that this is them lend, lend, lending me the money. And so we can approve them within a couple of days after I look through everything. And, and uh, so they, they like that, I believe. I mean, if they do have good credit and, and stuff and they want to, there's a guy right next door to me. I'll say, go next door. But most of them come back and I'm like, whoo, those are high. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they, they have good products and stuff. And if, if they're not, I don't really believe that, you know, the people that are, that are close to you were in direct competition because we're two different markets, Agreed. you know, hundred percent. Those folks, um, I love that you're working with the right buyers. You know, you have a, a buyer that's willing to jump through all your hoops. They have money to put down. They have decent income, um, polite, they jump through all your hoops, you know, for the right person, you're, you're trying to work with them. You know, you tell me, you know, what you can afford. I don't want people lying to me saying they can, they can pay whatever, like, no, you can't, you know, what can you afford? And, and I, I just, most investors, I, I think it's, you know, it's my way or the highway, but you're, you know, you're focusing on good people out there that have money that they're bringing in that have some savings and then, okay, let's talk about this like adults. Um, right. Well, they always talk about that they're going to pay it off early, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and so we do have the option, though, because I use a um, found it through through your course, Geek Pay, and they yeah. do have a button on there that says that they can pay more at any time. So I'm like, you know, let's set it up for a, an affordable payment. And then when you want to 
you know, pay that extra payment. Nobody has yet, by the way. But anyway, when you hit that button <laughs> and you pay more. So, um, you know, I don't want them to, to, to get, you know, pie in the sky that I can spend a thousand dollars a month where to pay it off when they actually can't. And I know they can't. So I'm going to say, let's make it about $700 a month and or whatever the number is, you know, $400 a month, whatever I know is comfortable for them. But, you know, then you run the risk of an older mobile home. Yes, we fixed it up. Yes, it's nice, but I don't want to do a 10 year loan on a 95 fixer upper, you know, because then you're looking at after six or seven, what if the thing starts breaking down and they don't want to pay it? So, you know, those are the kind of things I try to try to think about as well, you know. <laughs> Beautiful model, though, making a lot of your money back or most of it with the with before it even leaves your lot, uh, right? And cash flow for so long, right? And we do the we we don't pay for see, I pay for the move to come in, but I don't pay for the they have to pay for the move uh, to going out. Right. And movers are, whew, golly, that's another that's been my headache. <laughs> well, I want to ask you about the you know who you have on your team if you hire movers, uh, employees, licenses. But first, before we go into the the, the parks and all the, the maybe the fine details, who should create a dealership? There's investors in um, every state, <clears throat> mobile home investors in every state, maybe but Hawaii. Oh no, there's some there. They just don't invest in mobile homes there. Anyway, who should create a dealership? I mean, what? Uh, yeah, what what was the reason that you, I guess, yeah, who who should create that? That's what I'm thinking. Sure. Well, this opportunity kind of fell in my lap. It was a uh, um, I would say uh, um, about a year and a half ago, I started selling to uh, I was finding some uh, local investors that had or had deeper pockets than I did. And so I was finding I'm one of my strengths is, is being pretty good at buying. So I would find some deals and I would know those guys could pay me cash right away. And so I was selling to one guy and he was, you know, he, he never asked me how much I paid for it. I gave him a price and I would say 80% of the time he would buy from me cash. And so we became, he's an older uh, gentleman that's been in the business quite a, quite a while. And so he became more of a mentor. We became friends. So he had this land that, uh, that he, that, um, he wanted to develop and, um, you know, gave me the opportunity to use this land. So um, that was a kind of a deal that I couldn't pass up. And so as we marinated on this and talked about it more, you know, I thought this was a great deal for me. So um, I sold, you know, my house and, and moved up here and uh, we're, I'm renting a house now and, you know, here we are. And so um, it's worked out well. He's been, you know, we, I think it works both ways. I, I pay rent and he's got some on there and I, I show his as well, whatever's best for the customer. Um, it's not mine and his, it's kind of, we represent them all. So who should get a dealership? Um, I don't know. I mean, had this opportunity not come along, I would probably still be doing in parks. And I was looking for land um, just to park some on. Um, because, you know, it, it's, if you had an opportunity to buy one, um, but one thing I think that you, that a person really needs to do their due diligence and, and uh, go to the county. Because um, there were some counties around that I found some land available that I could rent, uh, but they weren't, um, a couple of counties weren't very happy that I was going to put mobile homes. Even if it was isolated rural part, they wanted me to go through a bunch of hoops like dig a retention pond, um, have a study. Um, you know, I'm like, are you, I'm just putting a mobile home on there. You know, maybe after four or five and, and they were, you know, I guess I could have done it, but had they come by and seen it, they probably would have shut me down. So without connecting anything. You were right. just gonna stay right. to sit them. Yeah, okay. because they were they were talking. One one county was telling me, "Well, you're gonna create more of a, um, I guess, a water uh, retention problem." I'm like, well, "Water's gonna fall on it anyway." They just it just seemed very. Uh, these engineers wanted to uh, put me through more hoops, and so with me, it wasn't worth it. So, but and there was another county that uh, told me, "Yeah, we don't care. You know, you can you can do what you want." I probably would have gone that way. So I would I would tell somebody if they're that was one of the things I was going to do is just park them on that area, and maybe I was going to be able to show them. And then I had another investor that I was going to try to put some with, but um, that's kind of uh, um, I guess. I may, I might have made that into my own dealership. It would have been a lot harder to do that way. I mean, you know, clearing the land and stuff. But um, if if you can find cheap land and you can do it, it does help out that you have a central location that you can prove them for. However, you are looking at the expense of moving it, 
um, you know, you're so I mean, there's pros and cons of both. I mean, if you can just keep it where it is, you can work on it, you don't have to move it, and you, you have a favorable um, person with a park, then you know, why, why move it? Um, but if you can have it on one location and uh, you moved it, and then you can, you know, have a family that comes out there that doesn't find one they're looking for, but they find one that you have available there, or they know that you can, then you have a customer kind of captured. There is a big difference between just talking to some farmer and saying, Hey, I want to, can I put a mobile home here and pay you 300 bucks? You know, can I keep it here for two months and sell it? There's a difference between that, which people listening can do. We, you can make a relationship with a farmer, with some land or somebody that has a dealership that maybe you'll, you'll pay them hundreds of dollars to hey, Can I, can I put it here? But like you said, you know, your dealership, you have a captivated audience. Now, once they're there, they can look at the other trailers Right. And we, you know, it helps out with social media. I mean, I got a big uh, 20 foot sign or something up there now that I paid a lot of money for. So we get a lot of traffic. I got uh, some signs out that have a arrow pointed, you know, to come in. So yeah, we get people driving by that just pull in on a Saturday or something. They're like, oh, what do you have? So that does help. And, you know, and, and, and putting things on like, uh, you know, Google and, and my GMB and, you know, um, search engine optimization, that type of stuff that does help as well. Of course that would help. And it brings credibility that I have an office, you know, we have an office there. I have a, you know, have, I have, uh, you know, 15 on site. I mean, it looks more legitimate than, you know, um, I'm a dealer, but I, I don't really have many, you know, or something like that, you know, so it does help. Out. <laughs> it helped. You had, not too much of a problem before, but this certainly does a feather, a feather in your cap for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, it does, you know, it gives me a little bit more <laughs> negotiating because, you know, and, and it's really nice. I mean, I, I tell you, if you have two or three people on the lot and they're both looking at the same ones, you can definitely say this person is going to probably buy, you know, I mean, it brings that, that sense of urgency, scarcity to the table where, I mean, you wouldn't believe how many times, and this, this has happened, uh, more than once where I had somebody come and they're like, well, let me think about it. And they come back and I'm like, it's sold. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, sorry, we sold it. And then they'll walk down the line. What about that one? I'm like, sold, 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 sold. That one's available that, you know, so then they're like, whoa, I, I better get one. And that happened to a couple. It was funny because the one couple came on a Saturday, they came back the next Saturday to buy it. It was gone. So, you know, they're kind of looking at me when I tell them, Hey, you're gonna uh it's gonna be gone and i get yeah, right whatever whatever sales guy and so <laughs> then they came back the second time and and uh they were like okay we think we're gonna go ahead and take this one i was like and i'm like that one's gone so the third weekend they came they walked in one and they were like is this one still available i said i said yeah but we have we want this one we got the money right now let's go you know <laughs> and so i was like all right you know so three weeks yeah in a row they yeah they came back three weeks in a row <laughs> I mean, the prices were good. I mean, I, you have, I have had so many people that stopped in and said, wow, your prices are really good because I think what I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at buying. So that helps out. So when I buy them, it, even if I get a really smoking deal on one, I don't just jack it up. I try to keep the prices consistent on, on where it is. And so, you know, my, I think this is one, one thing that, that um, I didn't, it took me a while to learn um home runs are awesome they're great but turns is where you make them money you make your money in turns you know um if i have one and let's say i pay just an example i pay ten thousand for it or let's say five thousand and i sell it at thirty thousand that's great man i made a ton of money on it but i would rather have a bunch of ones where i paid ten thousand and you know whatever the 20 or whatever and turn those and then because at the end of the day at the end of the year my turns are what's going to pay me, not my home runs. And I think it's doubles and singles. Home runs are, are, are good, but, you know, the ones that you just keep going and, and turning and have your, you know, have a formula. And um, if I can buy it at the price I want, and then I know I can sell it at a price and I got an idea, the numbers work, let's, let's buy it, let's sell it, and let's not get greedy. And, um, that's how, and that's how it's been successful for me. You get a lot of word of mouth already? Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a lot of trade-ins. Do people ever do that? Were they? Yeah. I just got yeah. one. As a matter of fact, I just got a trade-in. Um, 
uh, actually, I got two trade ins. So yeah, people call me and they 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 did a trade in, and so um, you know whatever the cash. So I did that on on a owner finance one, and so I, I use that as part of their down payment. And uh, they traded in, brought cash to the table for the rest of it, and uh, I sold that one. Um, you know, a few days later. So. So they're not staying in the park. They're not staying. I keep saying park. They're not staying in your lot for too long. No. Um, once I have them sold, I give them, I give people uh, 30 days to move it out. Um, I work with them a little bit because sometimes one, one thing too, that, that I will say is know your market. Um, because we have one area where um, a lot of people buy from and there's certain um specifications that this it's uh this neighborhood or this area has that they may not know so they'll come to us and say well we bought over here and i'm like okay well they're going to need nine pictures from you it's going to have to go before a board and their their uh, poa committee you know and i know the process because i've been down there and i've sold enough there and they're like no no that's not it and i say yes it is because once it leaves my lot it's yours you know we're not taking it back but I don't want to leave somebody in that spot. So I'll guide them through that and say no. And they're like, oh, thank you for wow. telling me that, you know. And then we we provide them with the pictures. I give them everything they need. And I say it's going to be about 30 days. And you can leave it here until that process is done. And they're like, oh. And because I, I, I learned that the hard way, um, when we first, one of my very first ones I sold, I sold to a lady in that area. And she jumped the gun. And she moved it out and my wife had to go over there and get a paper sign from her. She didn't have electricity, didn't have anything hooked up because she moved it in too quick. Her ground wasn't level. So the doors were, weren't opening and just all kinds of problems. And so, you know, I mean, it wasn't my fault. We did everything we could, but I would not like a person to have that type of problem. So we caution them against it. I make sure that they have all the appropriate paperwork because they don't usually know until they get into it. They think they can just buy it. We're going to move it on to my property. I'm like, no, there's a whole process you need to go through. And they're thankful of that, you know. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. How can be, people, you don't, I mean, whether it's through ignorance or being naive, you know, we, all of us don't know what we don't know. And to have somebody, I mean, a guardian angel or somebody, you know, think it just, hey, you know, this is what you're going to come up against that you can talk to them, that you can tell them that. And you're licensed. I mean, you're a dealer. You want what's right for people. You're ethical. You want them to succeed. You want right. them to get to transfer the ownership. Well, um, and I think that that, that, that is, uh, that to me, I had a customer call me the other day and, and uh, we had talked about moving and, and all these things. And she, met, she mentioned to me that she goes, well, I was misled. And I stopped her right there and I said, no, 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 no. Let's talk about this. How were you misled? What she didn't do is she didn't understand or she didn't write it down or whatever. But, you know, when somebody says that to me, I take offense, not really to them, but I don't want to ever be a misleading person. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather tell them that this is exactly what's wrong with a mobile home or, or this is what you're getting, you know, and there are certain guidelines as a dealer I have to follow, you know, and I never want somebody to complain about me. I mean, I have some movers issues sometimes that aren't my fault. And I'm actually kind of getting out of the moving business because I have no control over that. I am a licensed installer and I would sub that out. And then sometimes, you know, something breaks and the movers like, it's not my fault. And so I have to send my guys out there to fix it. And, um, you know, there are certain things that I do because I want my reputation to be good. Um, and I would rather pass on a sale and, you know, and then, you know, you want that sale so bad because you need to get that money to go buy more. You need to keep that machine going. But, you know, if it's just not right, it's just not right. And you can't, I would rather, when somebody calls me, I would rather know that it's like, oh, no, that person called me. I don't want those conversations. I want to be like, hey, what's going on? How you doing? And if something happens and, you know, we go out there and we try to work best around it. Um, I mean, there's... We had a we had an elderly an an older woman that had a uh, um, air condition problems. I don't guarantee the air conditions at all, and we write that in our closing documents specifically say is we are you know we do not warranty these because I have no idea how old the air condition is, and I'm not responsible for it according to the state and all these things. But I mean it's hot in Texas during the summer, and you know her AC went out 
And so she was like, uh, you know, I know that you don't cover it. And I know that uh, um, you're not able to do this, but what can you, is there any way you can help me? So I said, you know what, for two months, don't make your payment to me, go get some window units and then start back up two months later. And she was like, oh, thank you for doing that for me. And, and uh, you know, it just, it didn't really cost me anything and I didn't have to do it, but it was kind of the right thing to do. Now I can't do that with everybody. If it's an able-bodied guy, I'm like, look, man, you go find your own thing. But, um, you know, it, 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 I felt, it, I didn't want her to be that way. And, and uh, you know, you just got to make a decision sometimes. You can't do that for everybody. And sometimes you have to just draw the line. But if you can do things and make people easier, I think good karma comes back on you. You're so right about that. I, I like that you step up in that way. You said something before about stepping up where if a mover, you know, you sold a home, let's say on payments, and the mover is moving it out of your community or out of your, your lot into the wherever the new buyer is moving it to, and they damage it. It sounds like that's happened. Like your movers have damaged the home and then you go that's fix it. It's happened a lot. Yeah. That's I mean, that's, that's wow. happened quite a few times. And, and, you know, you're somebody's responsible. And, you know, you, you have somebody that just gave you, you know, a lot of money out of their pocket and they're paying a lot of money to have it hooked up and they're, you know, they're, they're paying, they're paying, they're paying. And then they bought a home from you that leaves your lot and it's in a condition and then it gets to them and it's not in the same condition. Well, I didn't drive the truck, you know, I didn't do all that, but they don't care. You know, they want somebody. So I've gone through a lot of movers um, because, you know, a lot of them were just like, you know, I, it's not my problem. It was like that when I, when I got it, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, and I've had wow, that happen. To me. And, yeah. I mean, well, you know, you think about it because these things are meant to bend and, you know, if you put texture on the wall, it's just a coating on a wall. And a lot of times that will crack. So a couple oh. of things we do is I will ahead of time, I will say, listen, um, this mobile home is going through and some of these neighborhoods, I mean, there are some big holes or something like that. So I, I will tell them now we're going to move this home and look at the condition it is now. And then when it gets to your lot, it may be not in that condition, but don't panic. It's okay. And so what I've done is, is I've actually charged a little bit more so I can send my guys out there to fix it if there's a problem. And so I kind of put that into the equation. I'm like, look, you can find your own movers if you want. And there's no problem. And then it's, it's once it hits the highway, it's yours. That's between you and your, your guy. And they really don't want to do that. They want me to be responsible for it. And I get it. So I'm like, all right, look, this is how much it's going to be if we move it. Because I already know that I'm going to have to send three guys, two guys to go fix it. I know how much it's going to be. And so I kind of put that into the equation. And then we just cover it and take care of it like that. If they don't use it, okay, so much. But, you know, the next one may be twice as much, you know. And I then, really like that. I tell them, look, you know, it's going to be this amount to move it. You can probably get a better deal if you shop around. And they're like, okay, we, we want you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. But, you know, set expectations because I set the expectations before it gets there that there might be a crack in the wall. You know, then I don't want them to open the door and be like, oh, my God, my ceiling fan fell and my wall cracked and the doors came off, you know. But I do make them go through it and pick up everything. They can't we can't move the home if it has something in it. You know, like if we put something in there, they got to move it because it'll crack a wall. So, you know, it's 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 frustrating, but it's part of the business. You know, because really, honestly, they want, a, if they're coming to a dealer, they want turnkey. They want you to do the the setup and everything else. So, you know, a lot of times they do, and they just want to pay you and they want to, you know, uh, pay the move. And, you know, it's a lot of money and they want, they want it done good. And so we, we can do that. I'm just, you know. I wish I could just sell them and be gone with it and say, all right, whatever. But, you know, we got to carry it all the way through. You have to carry it all the way through. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Doug. That's awesome. Um, can we talk about some of this or many or all of the steps or at least a bird's eye view so folks watching this can kind of write down some steps? They can do the homework where they're located. But can we talk about some of those steps to... I mean, from the land to development to 
signage and permits and yeah so the first thing that you need to do is go to the county go and at least that's what i did you have to go to the county and find out what what they're going to allow um because some you know may not want mobile homes on their you know over there so you have to go to the to the county office and that's what i did and so one thing that um i was gonna i was gonna put a mobile home on there as an office and put it on the land but since there's no city water or uh um sewer there they were gonna i was gonna have to put a septic tank in no matter who if i have a structure and the septic tank's fifteen thousand. So I'm like, oh, you know, what am I going to do? She said, well, you can work out of a mobile home, you know, if you're doing your stuff there, but, you know, you can't really have it as a structure. So what I did is the guy next door, there's a uh, like a gravel supply and he had a little office that's actually on his land and I rented that out. So the, 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 the um, we built a little sidewalk deal that comes right out into our land right there. So it's on his and so, you know, we have to get a fire marshal permit. You you have to make sure, you know, you get your mailbox set up. Um, you know, all these things that you don't think about. And the county's helpful at doing that. But, you know, in a year, am I going to move over there? Maybe. Uh, but, you know, I'm still going to. So I'm going to have to get a, a, um, a sewer, a septic tank, water, you know, electricity, and all these things hooked up. So I, I didn't have to do that with this other one. So, you know, make sure that you know um you don't want the county coming by one day and be like well what, you know who are you you're like well i'm a mobile home dealer i got a sign out and they're like okay well you didn't do this 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 and this so you can't do anything until you do this and it's going to cost you you know thirty thousand dollars you know that's what what you don't want so that would be the first step i would say you know so even right now you were doing the sidewalk deal and you i love that you thought well how can i make this work without putting in and dropping in that septic tank you know, instead of just forgetting about this, how can I make this work? Right, right. And then, you know, one thing that the guy that owns the land that I'm, you know, my mentor and the, and the, the investor that I met, you know, he's put a lot of money into it, uh, you know, because we clear, he cleared the land, but, you know, if you drive on there, you're just going to get stuck in, you know, rain or something. So he's put a lot of rock on there. So that's one thing you have to think about, where am I going to park them? Um, are people, is it, is it muddy or, you know, I mean, I don't know how much it's none of my business, but I do know he's, he spent a lot of money by, you know, grading it, graveling it. I mean, if you can find something that's already done, that's ideal. So those are costs that you have to think about, you know, clearing the land. Um, when they put a mobile home on there, if it rains, it's going to get stuck. You know, do you have, we have a, a, a road that goes down the middle and uh, you know, rock probably about, uh, it's about three acres. So we have about probably a little over an acre just rocked. And, you know, so it's okay, but in the back part, you know, it gets pretty muddy back there and they, they made him put a retention pond in and, you know, there's some things that they're, that they, that they made us do according to the county. So all counties are different. And, um, you know, so that's one thing. And then, then uh, putting my sign up, I had to call uh, text dot Texas department of, uh, I guess, motor vehicles, whatever it is, where they do the highways, I had to call them and find out. And they, I mean, it's funny. Make sure you get everybody, everybody's name because the guy said you can have a 12 foot sign. And I said, oh, all right. He goes, why? You sound like that's not high enough. I said, well, actually, when I was looking at was 20 foot, he goes, well, how far away is it from the, you know, I told him and he said, yeah, that's fine. You can do 20 foot. I'm like, okay, well, what's your name? You know, and he's, he's, like, he's like, oh, I'm the guy that's in charge of it. Don't worry about it. But I got his name. So when they come down there, I'm like, no, the Dwayne told me it's okay. Wow. You know, and so um the sign company came up and put it and, and uh you know fire marshal i have to get a a, a permit you know to, to for occupancy and insurance you know insurance is a big deal what if somebody slips and falls on your lot you know you want to have insurance and then your mobile homes need to be insured i mean there's just so many little things for instance the steps i buy my steps and they don't have a they have they come with the, the handrail but you have to nail them on yourself so i buy them from a guy I didn't have any of them, any handrails nailed on there. An insurance company came by and said, you have to have handrails on all of them, you know, to because then if somebody, you know, is going up a mobile home and falls down and that's a hazard. I didn't know that. So, you know, you just, you just got to make sure that you're covered and the you know, insurance is expensive. And, you know, what if my, oh, and another thing is when you sell one, 
you want to make sure that they have insurance on it too because if it burns up or just gets destroyed by a, a hurricane they have a note you know who's going to pay that and so you know those are things to think about um i think if i had listed everything down it would have been very overwhelming but you know i, I I really think that just when you find one, attack it and just go for it and then move to the next one. And don't let it get you down because it's not all, um, it's not all just the grind. You know, you have your wins and you have fun and you have things that are in between it. So if you just keep on working on that list and doing your things, you're gonna have joy and fun. And, you know, if I would have looked at that list, I'd like, this is terrible. I don't wanna do any of this. And I still don't, but I just do it. And then I don't, you know, I knock some out and then, you know, we sell one and we do this and we laugh and then I'm like, okay, we're well back on it. So um, that's kind of how I look at it, you know, just do it. Do it, yes. Yeah. Because the rewards outweigh the, the, the benefits. I mean, I'm in a job that I really like. I'm doing something I really like to do. Um, I'm not at a job that I don't particularly like. I mean, there are nice people there, but I didn't like what I was doing. And I didn't, and I didn't look up for, oh, there's my dog. Sorry. But I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't get up in the morning and, and uh, jump out of bed like I do now. You know, I jump out of bed and I think about it. So anyway, it's it's a, it's something that's worth it's worthwhile. So few people can say things like that. Yeah. And you feel, you know, you can look at yourself in the mirror. You know, you're helping folks. You've got a good business. You're making a bit you know, more and more of a reputation for yourself, which is only going to help. Feed yeah, <laughs> I hear yeah i hear your puppy right there That's awesome. yeah yeah he's kind of like what are you doing home i never see you <laughs> <laughs> pay attention to me <laughs> yeah yeah I, I take them down to the lot they love going to the lot oh i bet what was one of those the the permits the surveys the the what was something that you just kept banging your head against the wall or what's something that you just what was the hardest piece of the puzzle to to to, to fill or to come across what was the most challenging or fire permit because i don't own the business and the guy has you know his his septic tank has to be done and you know it cost him money and he was kind of like you know i went down there to get my fire i mean i have to get it done right and so he's like well now they just contacted me because my septic system has to be redone and something and i'm like you know sorry i mean i can't go without a permit the fire marshal comes over here and, and says it you know i mean they they they're pretty helpful at the county office and if you just go out there and say this is what i'm doing they'll, they'll guide you but you know some of the things you need to get done and um you know i wish i had control of all this but um you know in a year from now maybe i will but um i mean i'm fortunate because it's it saved me a lot of money not being able to do that but i don't have control over the septic tank and i could have done that in a week where it's, it's just drug on you know so um, you you don't have that from the fire department yet you're still obviously business is up and running. Is that, do you have a time limit of when you got to fix that? Well, they shut yeah, you down. Yeah, or? you have a time limit on everything. And so they're, they're all doing that and, and things are, are getting done, but you know, that's kind of like, but we don't have a, you know, the customers come in, we don't have that type of uh, business where it's a lot of people in there. So it's just like two people in there at a time. And so, but yeah, um, you know, maybe hopefully they don't watch this, but <laughs> <It's> <laughs> We're, we're we're getting it done so you know you there's I, there's plenty of folks that would be happy to skirt the law or you know ignorance is bliss i'm so glad that you mentioned about don't just buy something and assume hey i'll just do it kind of on under the radar you don't want no, the no. county coming out there saying well who are you don't have the, that was beautiful how you said that don't let them meet you on your no, property because... go to them yeah, there's so many times that I, you know, and there, there's, I mean, believe me, it's so tempting sometimes to sell a mobile home that is garbage that you know you shouldn't be selling because I'm a licensed dealer and I have certain standards, right? I mean, before when I was doing it, I was not licensed as is, I'm just Joe Citizen, but you know, you have a, an investment, this is your business. Um, and that, and, and, you know, I don't buy too many from, from wholesalers. Uh, some of the people that I know that that are good i will but you know it just it just kills me sometimes these guys that want to sell to me have no idea about the license and no idea about or not license i'm sorry titling um and i'm like this is your business you should learn this and you should you should be the expert when it comes to i mean you would not believe how many times i have bought a mobile home because i know how to title it 
And then I will go into you know, negotiation with somebody trying to sell it. And then they'll say, well, my grandfather or my, um, my dad passed away and this is his, what do I need to do? And I'm like, okay, do you got a letter of testamentary? They're like, yes. I'm like, do you have a will? No, whatever the thing is, I said, I don't need this, 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 and this. And then we can do the, the title. Thumb. And I will tell them this, this may sound arrogant or not. I say, I'm an expert in doing this. And I know exactly what I'm doing. And if you, and I'll take care of it all. They're like, just take it, do it. Um, I want it out of his name because I am, I do know what I'm doing and I do know how to, how to do it. And I would say probably I've been through every situation there is and I can call the state and ask them, but you know, to me, it's like, uh, I know exactly what I'm doing. And so I know what they have to give me and they want that person to do it. So learn the business, learn how to title, um, um, a quick, I was down in, in uh, Galveston County and they were saying that uh, um, they were, they were telling me that I had to pay these back taxes. Well, I know that they just sent a letter to all the uh, municipalities saying it's only four years that you're responsible for it unless there's a suit. So there were, there were taxes for six years and they had told me, um, well, you owe all these taxes before we're going to give you the form, it's form 1076. And I said, no, it's not, it's not six years, it's four years. So I pull it up on my phone and I, and I show them this and I say, this is what I need. This is according to the state. And it says in that language that they cannot um, impede me from getting what I need. So I told him, I said, you're in violation of the statute right now. And I said, I need to talk to the county attorney or I need to talk to the, um, the, the tax collector themselves because you don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say that, but anyway, the guy comes down. And, and so uh, I was frustrated and I paid an extra thousand dollars because I wanted it to, because it's an hour and a half from where I am. And I was adamant and I was a little ticked off because they don't know the, the law. It says it plain as day. Anyway, the county attorney called me on the way home and he said, uh, you're right. Um, and he, he was kind of laughing and he said, uh, well, you caused quite a stink down there. And I told him, I said, I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's funny that I spent three hours down there and you're laughing about it. And he goes, Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't mean to laugh, but I said, why is your staff untrained and they don't know what they're doing? And I know the laws, I showed them the statute and they still wouldn't cooperate. So I guess my point is know your business because nobody else is going to know it. Had that happened, I would have spent an extra thousand dollars. And how many times would I have over overspent? You know, and to me, it says, if you know the law and you know the requirements, then you can pretty much take on anything. I've had so many people tell me, um, well, I don't have the title for it. And I'm like, that's OK. I can I can get the title because I can. You know, who's the last person that had it? Send out a, uh, an affidavit of fact, you know, get all your stuff together. And the county will usually put in. Your, I mean, the state will usually put in your name if you meet all the requirements. And so I get a better deal. So. Yeah, it's just, you know, know your business. It's not that hard. And if you're, if this is the business you chose, then you should know what you're doing. So getting it, I mean, a dealership is not, even you jumped into that pretty quickly. I mean, that you could have waited another, or not could have waited, but I mean, you should not be a newbie getting a dealership. There's so much more to know before you get to that point. Make sure yeah, and this, this was a, uh, probably a little bit sooner than I would have done, but the opportunity came and I took it and, uh, you know, I'm glad I did. And, and, uh, um, you know, if you're a newbie, I mean, get your teeth wet, get kicked in the face a few times, you know, learn it, learn the business and, and, you know, get your, get your wins down and get your confidence up. And, and then, you know, you can walk into somewhere and, and, uh, do what you need to do. But yeah. Um, you know, just when you're right and you feel like this is the time, I mean, to me, it's like, yeah, you can, you can do it, get a dealership or, or, you know, it really, I guess it really depends on your goal of what you want. Uh, my goal is to, you know, quit my job, have us have a sustaining business and to have a, a bunch of notes coming in. You know, I want to have a, um, a significant amount of mobile money. <laughs> <laughs> significant, yes. Yeah. And then more. And, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a whole can of worms itself of, of making sure that, you know, my wife is a compliance queen. <laughs> and, uh, thank God, because I am not. <laughs> I am the kind of guy that you know. I don't care how the sausage is made. Let's just make the damn sausage. <laughs> He's always told me no, no, no. 
you know, when the state comes in here and looks at our files, I want them all right. I'm like, ah, they'll be fine. You know, she's like, nope. So it's partnership. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's very uh, studious and, you know, eyes, eyes dotted, T's crossed. And I'm kind of like, eh, let's just make the sale, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of partnerships, I'd like to ask you this. And if you don't want to answer it, if it's too personal, but how do you advice you mentioned before about working with your a partner that you no longer work with? but right. you're still friends. You're still amicable. How, for the folks listening, and I've been in this situation twice, what's that point? When do you know? Because it's going to be uncomfortable. You don't want to have that conversation, but how do you know, okay, this is partnership isn't working and we got to go our separate ways. How do I guess, how did you know? And then how did you have that conversation? Any tips about having yeah. that conversation? Well, there's one, you know, I was partnered with somebody before that, man, it would have been very uncomfortable because I know it wouldn't work right after it didn't work. out. I was so glad it didn't, you know, because this was a friend of mine and it would have been bad, you know, because we, we wouldn't have put the same effort into it. Um, I think one thing that, that, you know, if you're passionate about and you and you really want to do it, you have to find that same person with that energy. Because you're going to do stuff that, you know, seems kind of crazy, you know, on a Friday night, you're going to be looking at mobile homes and, you know, doing the stuff that you want to do, you know, because I'm passionate about it. I'm, I'm obsessed with this business. I love it. I, I like to do it. I like this business. And if you can't have somebody that's that passionate with you, then you're going to kind of resent them, I think. And you're going to think to yourself, man, here I am doing these deals. And so my other partner, my partner that I had, his name is Miguel. We were we had that together. You know, and he would meet me and we would always do it. Um, there just came a time when this came about. Um, he had another business, kind of like a remodeling business as well. And so that was kind of going one way. And then I was doing this and, and uh, I don't know. Um, it was very difficult to bring it up and very uncomfortable because, you know, I consider us friends. And, you know, once I brought it up, he was amical about it or you know he was like yes I agree with you and so there was no thing you know we had it we had everything tied up so we had to untie it and that was you know just try to make the best decision you can about assets and whatever um so I mean we did it and we did what we you know so I guess the time we had different goals um you know he's a little bit younger than I am and I wanted the dealership and, and he didn't, you know, and I have to be there every day. Somebody's got to be there. And, you know, you have to make that commitment to that. And, you know, he is his, his wasn't, and, you know, and that's fair because I, we didn't start out that way. You know, it wasn't like, this is what's going to happen. And, and so we were very, you know, forthright and there was no problems at all when we decided to move everything out, but, you know, breaching that and coming to you, I think we both saw it coming and I was actually the one that said it first. So you know, um, I guess to answer your question is, is uh, if you start feeling like it's not working, it's not going to get better. Might as well just go in and do it now and, and remain friends because, you know, who knows a year from now, if, if he might have got mad with me or I might, I don't know, but I would rather be friends with him Big time. And, and, you know, be able to pick up the phone and talk to him now like we do instead of just being resentful or things like that, you know. Just like any, I mean, almost it's a relationship, just right. like a relationship where human beings are emotional or can think things that aren't, people aren't, are, people aren't being, you know, we were thinking one way that's probably not even true or we're projecting things onto people. Well, I think, you know, sticking your head in the sand on anything, this uh, permits, you know, thinking it's not good. You have to face it. And the, fa the sooner you face it and the, and the more you take care of it, the better off you're going to be, even though you don't want to do it. I, there's things I do every day I don't want to do, you know, calling a customer that's unhappy um, and making it right. And then they're, they're happy. I don't just ignore it um, and, and then, you know, let them think they're going to go away because they're not, you know, the county is not going to go away if I don't do what I do. They're not just going to all of a sudden say, OK, you know, the partnership is not going to get better. And, you know, if I don't take care of it now and our park managers, whatever the deal is, just do it and just pull the bandaid off and get it done as soon as you can. And it'll save you. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to sit in bed at night and, and uh, think about things that I need to do. I'd rather just do them during the day and then sleep better at night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> seriously, instead of looking over your shoulder or wondering what if or 
Yeah. And then, being, you, know, having, you know, having all these things that I need to take care of and I'm, you know, I'm eventually going to do it. Right. Might as well just do it now I and mean, just get it over with. I feel like those can really build up over time. Those little things that we put off after a couple of days, it's like we made almost like a mountain out of a molehill. Now it's, it's never it just, as bad as you think effort. it's going to be. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah I mean, I got a list and, and I'm a list guy and I write down things that have yeah, to be done. Over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, these have to be done. These can be done tomorrow. You know, and I'm going to knock down all the stuff on my list. What's better for my business? What's going to do here? But, you know, the, the problems are on the list, too. And I try not to make them go the next day or the next day. You know, I mean, I had a lady that was unhappy with her mobile home. Um, she sent a crew out to fix everything. Didn't give me a chance to do anything with it and sent me a bill. Huh. Right. So. Yeah, I was like, I mean, that, that, so everything is a lesson, lesson learned. So guess what I did now in my closing documents, I put in, I put a, um, a piece of paper in there. They have to sign. that says that they have to give me the choice. You know, they have to refer it to me first to, to be able to, 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 to uh, warranty any problems or something. You can't just, you know, give me a bill. And so I paid her some and uh, you know, whatever but you know that conversation i didn't want i mean she wanted twenty two hundred dollars from me you know because she said that this wasn't up to par and i'm like so anyway i had a conversation i paid it but but i learned a lesson from it and now i have that in my closing documents they have to sign that they have to give me the first right or it's not covered Great work. you know yes. so You're yeah i mean that wow. that wasn't something i want to pick up the phone and talk to her about because i know she's gonna get mad but i went ahead and paid and i did i want to pay it heck no but, you know, I paid some of it and, and we worked it out. But, you know, they're just things like that. They're just those little things that just, just take care of it. Now she's happy. She loved, gave me a good review and we're, we're down the road. Oh, good. She did give you a good review. Yeah. You called back. And if you're delaying on the call, people know that. You know, right. they don't hear from you for a few days. They don't like me that. They're... Right, right. Exactly. And, you know, and it's just move on and it's just business, you know. This I mean, I was just expecting to hop on this call to talk about the um, to talk about the dealership, and we've talked about I mean, so much more that's more important than that: I mean, trust, ethics, long-term business mindset. Um, actually, what we didn't talk about, which I would, I'm glad that I'm thinking about this. If you have just a couple more minutes, yeah, no the, the employees. How did you did that build up slowly? Oh, I need this person. I need that person. Or did it all? Come yeah home. so um finding a uh, a crew <laughs> that i think i called you about that and then um um luckily i found somebody referred um i called a person that did skirting or something like that and and was was asking them something i said by the way do you have somebody they referred somebody to me and um you know it took me a while to find the right guy i mean i went through one crew i'll tell you a story I was walking by one of my mobile homes and I smelled marijuana. I mean, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I was like, what is that? So I walked in there on a Tuesday at 11 o'clock, they were smoking and drinking. I mean, I got power tools here. So I said, you know, get off of my lot, get out of here. You're fired or whatever. I mean, it just uh, amazed me. And this was right at the, at the lot. At the dealership, when I had a customer, I'm showing, and the customer was laughing. But somebody's having fun, you know. So oh, unbelievable! Oh my so, god, that is pretty ballsy. That's really unbelievable. Oh, very unbelievable. So that happened, um, and then I had a, you know another uh, one thing about the uh, some con this contract. I don't want to say contractors. This contractor, you know, they give you a price, and then they um, so you you pay them in in um, installments. And then last installment, they want to get paid the balance without finishing because they kind of ran out of money. I've already, I've already know their game. And so they go and they, they fit in that. If you pay them, then they're going to finish it half. In this case, anyway, they finished it. It was very sloppy and it's hard for them to get in the back because they don't want to go in and do the work, you know, because you've already paid them. Right. So, you know, I've had to get rid of a couple of contractors like that, that aren't as professional because, you know, they're not, they don't have the cash flow of the management to do the job all the way through. So, you know, that, and that was, and I like the guys, a couple of them, but you know, you just have to do what's best for your business. Um, and so now I have, a, you know, I've worked through 
these guys until I found the guys that are professional and, you know, they do the job they have. So that was, that was a challenge there uh, to find the ones that are, you know, do good work, reasonably priced and they're, they're going to be there and they're going to do what they say they can do. They're going to do. So that's, that's one of the things. And then finding help. Um, we we found a girl that works in our office now. She's bilingual. She's great. Um, you know, she can show and, and I got her license. So I paid for her license. And so she can legally sell now. And then, so I have to pay her a commission on top of that, which is fine with me, you know? So, and I told her, I want her to make as much money as, as she can, you know, because that means I'm making money, you know? And so I run a lot of Facebook ads and they're all in Spanish and I can't speak, speak a look of Spanish, you know, very good. And so my wife can, and, and, um, our salesperson can, and so they handle the leads and, and, you know, they, they go from there. And so that helps out tremendously because I would be in a lot of trouble if I didn't have uh, people that spoke Spanish with me. Big time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, employees, uh, partnerships, uh, you know, because I've met, uh, Nat and Jay that, you know, through you and, and, uh, you know, a lot of people in the group are, are, are awesome partners and, you know, and then, then people that, uh, that aren't in the group that have reached out to me. Um, I really like one guy told me, he said, there's enough for everybody. You know, we don't have to be in competition and, and, uh, you know, and that, that's nice to have, you know, that there, there are people that, that aren't, um, particularly, Thank you as competition, you know, think that, hey, you know, if, if I can help you out or you have something, let me know and then I'll send somebody your way. So that's good to know. Speaking of that, for folks listening to this in the greater Houston area, is there a way that, how can people, how can you help folks or how can they help you or if they need a place to store a home? Yeah. If they're so an investor or, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I have, I have, I have space in my lot. Um, you know, we could work something out if they wanted, you know, we can, we can, um, if there's, um, you know, there's an expense to moving it and, uh, doing those type of things. But, you know, one good thing I do have active people coming in looking all the time so we could work out some type of deal that way. I don't have unlimited space, but, uh, you know, we could do something along that way. Um, and then too, you know, um, if you're, if you're just getting into this, or even if you've just been in a while, for me, I think one of the best things I did to begin is, is get a relationship with, with people that were buying. Um, because I would take less for it than if I put it on, on uh, Facebook or something, but I could sell it quick. So, you know, I'm going to buy. I know people that, that if I can't, they can buy and you'll get cash real quick and that funds your business. So to me, that would be the, you know, find dealers are people that, that are cash buyers you know and then so that you know if you have something run it by me um my number it's 832-558-5822 you know call me or mobilehouston.com is my website but yeah i'm willing to work with anybody um you know to, and then like i like somebody told me that i don't think we're in competition um there's enough people looking and right now the market is hot and there's plenty of people looking for mobile homes right now. And, uh, you know, so if I can help you out, just let me know. You know, you can park it on my spot. Um, or if you just have a question, you know, I don't mind somebody calling me up and, and saying, because I certainly was glad to have, uh, you know, people call me or when I could call somebody and ask them a question or whatever. But, you know, don't be afraid. Um, you know, if you, I mean, you're 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 just doing something that, that you're uncomfortable with. I mean. I'm going to go see a mobile home. I'm actually looking at two mobile homes this afternoon. And um, I feel 100% confidence that I'm going to control the situation. I'm going to buy if the price is right. And I'm going to bring it in my lot and I'll make money on it. But that's because I've experienced enough of it. And, and I just, you know, had you told me this when I first started, there's no way I would have been nervous. And what if I make a mistake? And what if I do this? And guess what? I made mistakes but I did it enough that I don't make those mistakes again. And, you know, I learned what my, um, where my, where my market has to be, what I have to pay for. I, I overpaid for one about a month ago and it really made me mad because I just, you know, I bought it from a wholesaler. I got nervous because my inventory was low. <laughs> I made money on it. 
but it's still, I could have bought it for half what I paid for because I know that I can buy better, but you know, um, I got a little nervous because my inventory was low and I had people needing it and whatever, but you know, um, you're still going to make mistakes, you know? Just, you're funny. No, that this human emotion, but, but you know, your numbers well enough to still. Right. Out. Oh, yeah. What I think too is, is that, you know, I put a spreadsheet out where, um, and this, this helps so much, you know, know all of your costs, you know, know everything that you have into it. I mean, I'm talking about what you paid for it, how much it costs to move. There's any rehab in it. Um, taxes. I mean, and, and here's another tip, I would say, if you find one that has a tax lien on it, just because it says $2,000 is what the lien is, it's going to be about three times that much because of taxes. I mean, because of penalties and interest. So you think to yourself, it's got a $2,000 tax lien. You go down to the tax office, pay that off. And they tell you, you know, 5,500. You're like, what? And they're going to say, yeah. So then that just ate into a lot of your profits. So you may, you know, you may want to call the county office first, but you know, have all those costs in there and then decide on what you have to make. And then, you know, so I bought it for all in for 10,000. Do I want to double my money at 20? Okay. Well, then there you go. Or do I want to turn it and make, you know, but then, what I would suggest is you find a number that you're comfortable with and then you stick to it. Everything fits in that model. Don't deviate from that because if you start deviating and making exceptions, go lower, go higher, you're not going to have your, your process. Keep your process, your process and you own the process. If you want to change it, change it, but don't just, you know, go out there wholeheartedly. Um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know where to buy it and I know where to sell it. And I do not deviate from my process. Hardly ever. I mean, I, I, I don't. And that's, and that's it worked well with me because it's not emotional. Good for you. That's easier said than done. Right. With the, with the process, you know, cause you, cause it does get emotional. It does get, well, you know, maybe just this one time, let me look the other way. Or I really want to believe this person that they're, right. gonna, you know, Right. And if somebody comes in and they, you know, they're, they're, I don't know, I had a lady that was, um, I was offering one for, I think I saw it for 38,000. And she said, what's the cash price? And, and I said, well, you know, I, I looked at my numbers. I said, well, I sell it to you for cash for 33. And she goes, I got 30 right now. And I said, the cash price is 33. And she was like, I got 30 right now. And I said, the cash price is 33. She goes, well, I'm not going to buy it for 30. I said, oh, no problem. Well, let me know when you come. And, you know, I was making money, right? And I stuck to my guns and, and uh, did I need the money? Of course I do. I need that, that to, 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 for cash flow reasons, but I stuck to my guns and I sold it for 38. Oh, wow. Oh, great. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, and then you just got to be confident that it's going to sell and you're going to find the right buyer and, and don't panic. I mean, if I didn't have any money in the bank and I did it, yes, you know, I got to do what I got to do. And I'm not saying make decisions that hurt you. And if you need the money, do what you're going to do, but get to a point where you have enough money that you can, you know, do that. And I'm not saying that I couldn't do that beginning. You know, I was, I was excited to make 5,000 and, and here, and, and that, those are great wins. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say like, Oh, 5,000. No, that's a lot of money. But you know, when you get to a point where you're, you're doing this as a business and not as a hobby and you're, you know, have your numbers down and, and stay within your, your range of where you are and it will pay off well for you. You know, I'm not trying to make a home run on things. I'm not trying to give one away. I'm trying to make my money and I'm just going to turn it. And I know they're going to turn. I mean, I can panic sometimes on a Saturday last uh, two weeks ago, it rained. I had so many people coming in. I'm like, Oh man, we're going to make some money today. I had three people come in and not one sale because it was raining. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, but I that's didn't when panic. You, you that's know? when you do most of your business on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Saturday. And I mean, we get people, but yeah. So Saturday, I just said, we had a lot, I ran a big Facebook ad. We spent a lot of money. People were coming in. I was excited. And then it rained all day and I had three people come in and no sell. And I was like, Oh, you know, but I didn't panic and we're fine. I sold almost everything now. You know, it just, it just works out and, and, you know, don't get too happy when things are going great and don't get too, too panic when things aren't going the way they are. Everything's going to turn, you know, it, that does come with experience, but that did take me a while to realize that, oh, business shouldn't be 
a roller coaster. You know, business right. should be predictable, or you know, and right. Well, I mean, you know, and then right now, I mean, I'm still, I mean, I'm still a newbie. I think I'll always be a newbie. But you know, with with my cash flow as it is, I mean, I don't, I don't have the luxury of of you know, oh, well, I'm going to go out and buy, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my money and I'm, I'm making sure that, that I have enough cash. And that's, that's my biggest concern, but um, knowing that it's going to be all right, because I'm, I'm, I'm diligent about what I'm doing and I'm a student of my money and, and I'm not doing dumb things, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and then it's going to work out. I mean, if I'm doing dumb things and, you know, well, I get what I deserve, but uh, if I can, you know, astutely make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm investing the right way and it's going to be all right. It may not be my terms of everything, but, you know, I'm not, I try not to get too panicky when that, you know, when, when a rainy day comes and, and all I get the people <laughs> in my eyes. but I'm also not jumping for joy when we have a day where I sell four and, you know, I'm not the king, king of the world thinking I'm the greatest thing ever, you know, that's the way it is, you know, <laughs> yeah, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, you know, just, that's the way it's going to be. You know, you have highs, you have lows, but if I can stay in between and and uh, um, just you know it's keep good. on trucking, this has been incredible. Thank you so much. Did we we covered so much, and there is this is a amazing uh, podcast. Is there anything that you'd like to cover that we didn't touch on? Or no, advice? I think I talk a lot. So probably no, not. you do not. That was worth it. Please, there's yeah. everyone. Uh, this was awesome. I hope people have a notebook full of uh, full of notes. Do you? Thank you so much. We'll be. Uh, we're always talking, so nothing will change there. Thank you so much, Doug, for hopping on this call. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope this was helpful.